So we know how to factor polynomial expressions now, but now we're going to start looking at solving quadratic equations. So again, what does it mean to be quadratic? We have second degree. Highest power that ever shows up is 2. So we have some examples here. Each of these are examples of quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. So before we weren't asked to solve anything, we were just factoring. But now, when we have an equation, when we have that equal sign introduced, we're actually solving for values of x now. So we're going to be using that factoring skill in another application. So a quadratic equation is an equation equivalent to that form. ax squared, so some constant out on the front of x squared, plus some constant on the front of x, plus c equal to zero. Okay, the only thing that we have to remember with those quadratic equations, a cannot be zero, because if I get rid of that first term, it's no longer quadratic, now it's linear. Very different case. So we just have numbers on the front, a, b, and c are constants. So when we're solving these kinds of equations, what happens? So if I have two quantities, a and b, and when I multiply them together, I get out zero. What does that mean? What are my options for A and for B? Either the first one is equal to zero, because if A is zero, then B is gone, or what else? A could be something, and B could be zero. So when we have the product of two quantities being zero, that tells us one chunk or both at the same time has to be zero. So we're going to use that to our advantage solving these quadratic equations. But let's start small. So if I have that 7 times x is equal to 0, what is my option for x? I only have one. We could actually go about solving it if we really wanted to. If I divide both sides by 7, 0 divided by anything is 0, then I know x is 0. We can see that just from looking at it. I have to get rid of 7 and turn it into 0, what do we have to multiply by? 0. Same story up here. If we have two quantities now, or two more complicated expressions, what are my options? Here is where we break with our multiplication. So either x is equal to 0, or what else? This second chunk altogether, 2x minus 9 is equal to 0. Because when I multiply 0 here, it cancels out the rest. If I multiply 0 here, it cancels out the rest that way. So we can actually solve for these x values, which is what we'll look at in a minute. In the last case, let's see again. Two things multiplying together to give me 0. Either the first one is equal to 0, or the second one is. Or they both are at the same time. So let's actually take that problem now and give it some gusto. We want to solve this quadratic equation. It's already factored for us, and it's set equal to 0. So again, like we've just seen, either x plus 3 is equal to 0, first chunk is, or second chunk is. So what x values do we require to be able to make those true? So if I'm solving for x over here, I need to subtract 3 from both sides. If I'm solving for x over here, I need to add 2 to both sides. So my solution set, the thing that makes this true, negative 3 and 2. And we can always double check. If I plug in negative 3, this chunk turns to 0, all of it's gone. Makes it true. If I plug in 2, this part is 0 cancels out everything, makes it true. So we can use that principle of zero products to our advantage. We know how to factor, and after we factored, we just take each part and set it equal to zero and solve. So let's use that principle of zero products now to solve these quadratic equations. So in the very beginning, it fits uh, the pattern to use the principle of zero products. I've got one thing being multiplied by another, and it's equal to zero. So that tells me either this first chunk is equal to 0, 
or the second chunk, x minus 7, is equal to 0. And we can solve for those x values. Pretty straightforward. I need x on its own, so I've got to move 1 first over here. So I've got 5x is negative 1. And we need x on its own, so we divide by 5. So x is negative 1 fifth. That will make our equation true. The other option that we have, again, solving for x, what do we need to do? Add 7 to both sides. So my solution set to this equation, negative 1 fifth and 7. And this order doesn't matter in set notation. You could write 7 first and then negative 1 fifth last. It doesn't matter. It's just telling us you could choose one of these options, plug it in, and it will make the equation true. We can always plug them back in to check if you're not confident with your algebra at the end. Next one. Again, we've got product of two quantities. So either the first one is equal to zero. Done. Solved. X is equal to zero. Or the second part, 2x minus 9, is equal to zero. And that one requires a little bit more work. What do we have to move first? The 9, and we need to divide by 2. X is 9 halves. So our solution set in this case is either 0 or 9 halves. That will make our equation true. So go ahead and take these next two. Solve them. Check your answers if you're not confident. But in both, we have two quantities being multiplied equal to 0. So I know either this first piece is equal to 0, or the second one is. So what does that mean for our x values? x is either 3, or x is negative 4. So that is our solution set. And again, we can plug in. If I plug in 3, my first chunk zeroes out everything. If I plug in negative 4, my second chunk zeroes out everything. And for the last one, again, two things being multiplied equal to zero. Either the first one is zero, or second one is zero. So as we start to solve for x, one has to move first. Our factor of one, we need to divide by four. So x is negative one-fourth. Or what else? We got to move the two. Divide by 3, we get 2 thirds. So our solution set here contains a bunch of fractions. And again, we can always plug it back in to the original, check and make sure that it's true if you aren't confident with your answers.